DNA has helped Meridian police solve a 32-year-old mystery and led them to the mother of a newborn baby boy who was found at the base of a tree on January 2, 1988, after dying from exposure. Police located the woman earlier this month and she admitted to being the baby's mother and told police that she'd been waiting 32 years for them to knock on her door. Police identified her Tuesday as Karen Kuzmak Roche. No charges are expected in the case, police said. The statute of limitations on manslaughter is 20 years. Meridian Police started working with a national organization that specializes in genetic DNA testing to try to identify the mother of the unknown boy who was found abandoned and frozen in a parking lot on Evansville Avenue in South Meridian on January 2, 1988. While working close to the case, police have honored the baby, naming him David Paul because they said David means God's beloved and Paul means little man. A local resident donated a burial plot and police have held annual memorial services for the infant, vowing never to forget him. A detective who started working for a state agency had the fortuitous opportunity to meet Colleen Fitzpatrick, a forensic genealogical consultant, founder of Identifiers International and co-executive director of the DNA Doe Project. She agreed to take on the case, police said, in August 2011. DNA was a new tool to law enforcement. Detectives started looking into what they could do then that they'd not been able to do before. Investigators approached the state forensics lab about doing a family tree-based search using David Paul's DNA, but they could only enter profiles into their system, and they'd already done that with the mother's DNA. There were just two agencies that were able to do the type of search they were looking for, including one at the University of North Texas. Around 2012, a retired detective attended a training seminar Fitzpatrick held, and she expressed an immediate interest in the case and decided to take it on. Fitzpatrick said she came up with a possible name, last name, in 2014. Five years later, in March 2017, Fitzpatrick reached out to Meredith and police and offered an opportunity that would eventually lead them to the solution of the case. Genome Sequencing of DNA Profiles There was also a private funding for a proof-of-concept study to see if it would lead them to identify Jane and John Doe, Fitzpatrick said. Dr. Margaret Press, another forensic genealogist, had contacted her in 2017 about trying to use autosomal SNP testing, the big genealogy, the kind that eventually identified the Golden State Killer. The genealogist went to Meridian Police with the idea, and Fitzpatrick said this is a landmark case and the department trusted them with the DNA sample. This is one of two original cold cases that were approached using the new way of doing things, Fitzpatrick said. This was a year before the Golden State Killer DNA led to distant family relatives and police followed up on the leads. Then, in February 2019, Fitzpatrick reached out to police about another DNA type that federal law enforcement was using to search profile family tree DNA, and she wanted police to get profiles in before the site shut down the ability to add new profiles. Police approved it, added the profiles, and revealed the closest match so far a second or third cousin, according to police. In November 2019, investigators were planning to go to Florida to talk to the closest relative found through a DNA match. The day before the trip, a lieutenant received a message from Fitzpatrick. She would be coming to Connecticut on unrelated business and wanted to meet in person about the case. She revealed that DNA had identified another distant relative to David Paul's mother, and there were female family members who lived in the neighborhood where the baby was found, police said. On the 32nd anniversary of finding David Paul, the decision was made to make contact with one of these relatives. The contact led us today in finding closure for the David Paul case and for the city, Police Chief Jeffrey Cassette said last week. The state forensic lab made a positive DNA match, police said. Authorities said during a news conference Tuesday that the mother indicated that she had a lot of remorse. She was 25 years old in 1988 and told investigators that she was in a bad state of mind at the time and that she had delivered the baby herself, dropped the baby at the base of a tree, and called a volunteer fire department at the time, indicating only that there was something they should look for. Firefighters went to the area and searched, but didn't find anything. The baby was left in a wooded area at the base of a tree, police said. According to police, she made mention that had the safe haven law been in existence when the baby was born, she would have taken advantage of it. Connecticut adopted safe haven legislation in 2000, and it was modeled after an existing Texas law. The Safe Haven Act 
allows a parent to voluntarily give up custody of an infant who is 30 days or younger and the parent will not be subject to arrest or abandonment. The act does not protect the parent from being arrested and criminally prosecuted if abuse or neglect has occurred. Police said they believe the baby was left on December 28, 1987 and was found five days later. Police said they do not believe that the baby's father was aware of what happened.